It's a Tuesday, January 4th, and the time for your Bobby List today morning news update. A total of 108 candidates from several parties and the nine independents will contest the January 19th general election, the outcome of which party leaders say will be crucial to Barbados overcoming the challenges ahead. The final tally was reported by election authorities. Supervisor of Elections Angela Taylor meantime told Barbados today that Monday's nomination day process went well. Among those filing nomination papers amid COVID-19 restrictions were Prime Minister and the leader of the Barbados Labour Party, Mia Motley, Democratic Labour Party leader, Vola de Pisa, and the leader of the Alliance Party for Progress, Bishop Joseph Atherley. The Barbados Labour Party and the Democratic Labour Party are both filled in a full slate of 30 candidates, while the Alliance Party for Progress has nominated a total of 20 candidates. Noted political scientist Dr. George Bell has given his views on Bishop Joseph Atherley's decision to change constituencies for the upcoming general election. After filing his nomination papers on Monday, Bishop Atherley, who served the St. Michael West constituency for over two decades for the Barbados Labour Party, disclosed that he was now contesting the seat for St. Michael Central, currently held by the BLP's Arthur Holder. The holder and um, holder. No, 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 no. Oh. The, the he, he, oh, from the Michael Gas, yeah. right, 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 yeah. Prime Minister Mia Motley was also asked to comment on the development. I, I believe that this campaign is being reduced regrettably to persons who want uh, an agenda to make a statement because I'm not sure that he can do in two weeks that which he has done in the last 1999, so this is what, 22, 22 years, years um, in St. Michael West and I ask myself what is it really about? Is it about the people? If it was about the people, why is he not in St. Michael West who voted with absolute confidence for him on the last occasion? If it is about trying to stop Arthur Holder from becoming the next member of parliament, then I understand why he's gone up there. And I find that a most unchristian thing to do um, because you're not going in to, 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 to an election to block a man. You're going to an election to offer yourself a service and representation. The Democratic Labour Party candidate for St. James South, Dr. Ronnie Yearwood, has expressed concerns by suggestions that COVID-19 infected persons will not be able to vote in the upcoming January 19 general election. Dr. Yearwood believes the restriction does not augur well for a democracy and he has suggested that affected voters may have legal recourse on the election laws and the constitution. Meantime, a veteran politician, Dr. David Estwick, who filed his nomination for the St. Philip West constituency, said that such a decision would disenfranchise voters. Yes, we've been battling with COVID for two years, since for two years. I believe very strongly we would have had ample time to have planned out a better system that utilized proper technology and utilize proper administrative approaches to not disenfranchise a voter in this country who is mentally competent, can walk, can talk, can hear and see. So for me, 
that is a form of voter suppression and and i feel very strongly that there's technologies that are, will allow those types of persons who are not incapacitated to utilize the technology to vote mm -hmm. we need to wake up and understand that's what's been happening around the world and i can say this in regards to lack of understanding and planning because you know i, I went to school we went in medicine the first thing to tell us what the five p's proper mm -hmm. planning prevent poor performance that should have been planned out knowing that you had to deal with covid for about two years we should not be disenfranchising nobody in Barbados who is not mentally incapacitated or physically incapacitated. Dr. Estwick contended that the situation was as a result of poor management. I understand the challenges of COVID um, present, but we should have done better knowing the scenario that we had if we were going to plan an election in regards to the COVID-19 pandemic being 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 uh, being uh, rampant and at the time when you are having an increase in the numbers when you're having an increase in numbers so, so you, you're not you're not having five cases six cases, you're having 260 mm -hmm. every every day That's right. and then you don't put the administrative protocol or the technology in place in order to manage that appropriately i, I don't know how else to describe that as very 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 poor management there's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mom, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated, and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To news from other region, no official confirmation yet, but health officials in Guyana believe the highly transmissible Omicron variant of COVID-19 is already present in the country. More from Gordon Mosley of News Source, Guyana. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony today said while it has not been confirmed that the fastest spreading Omicron variant of COVID-19 is in the country, recent COVID-19 numbers indicate that the variant might already be circulating here. The new variant has already been confirmed in a number of other CARICOM countries. Guyana does not have the capacity to test for new variants. Last week, health authorities in Guyana warned that while the COVID situation was improving and the numbers were under decline, persons should not drop their guard. But after the busy holiday season, the numbers have started to increase. Well, we are constantly monitoring what we have seen in other countries. Um, children who are vaccinated would get a milder form of the disease if they do contract the, the virus. Um, in a lot of cases, they remain asymptomatic. So we will continue to monitor. The health minister said the Ministry of Health is anticipating a high number of positive cases in coming days with the current trend. And while only just over 90 cases were reported over the past 24 hours, he noted that that could be attributed to the low number of testing that was done. If there are children who um, get a more severe form of disease, well then they'll have to be hospitalized and we will work with them accordingly. Dr. Anthony is encouraging persons who are fully vaccinated to get the booster dose to be better protected against the variant. And finally, children in the U.S. return to face-to-face -face classes despite a surge in COVID-19 cases. More from CBS News. More children enter the hospital infected with the Omicron variant. The FDA says those as young as 12 can now get a third dose or booster of the Pfizer vaccine. Despite surging COVID cases, millions of children return to school today, including in New York City. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen day to day. We are staying open. 
We're going to do, to do everything that we have to do to keep our schools open. The city is doubling the number of students tested in each school and providing an additional 2 million test kits. How are you? In Washington, D.C., the number of new cases jumped 331 percent in the last two weeks. The nation's second largest school system, Los Angeles Unified, has ordered students and staff to undergo mandatory COVID testing before classes resume next week. But out of more than 13 thousand school districts in the country, less than 150 have decided to start the semester with all remote learning. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.